Good afternoon and congratulations on renting your RV. This RV is a Four Winds 5000 built in 2004 and it presently stands at a little over 28 feet long and approximately 100 inches wide. It is a little over 14 feet tall so be cautious of bridges upon approach though most bridges in the United States are at least 14 feet or taller. Typically you'll see major warning signs if they're not. Just covering the exterior of the RV here, you have a storage bin there, you have an awning here, and then you have a storage bin down here, which we will cover in a later video. Right here is one of three entry points to the RV, the other two being the front doors. Right before we get in, just wanted to point out, you have two outlets here. There are a total of only four things that do not work in the RV when the generator is not on or you're not connected to an outside power source, that being all the outlets in the RV, the air conditioner, the electric water heater, and the microwave. Now, starting with turning on everything in the RV is your main power source, which is right here. You turn this on, everything stays on. I do recommend keeping that on for the duration of your stay. If it is turned off, the microwave, I mean, excuse me, if it is turned off, the refrigerator will not work. Coming over here and entering the RV, you turn around and this is the door just directly behind us. And then you have the couch, the driving area you have the bed above the driving area various cabinets another table slash bed and then the kitchen stove range microwave two different bathroom setups and then the master bedroom and refrigerator now we're going to cover all of that but first i'm going to shut this door and show you how that works now when you shut this door you have two different locks that you can view from both the inside and outside which come with two different keys the first one here is a deadbolt, which you want to lock when the RV is in motion. And then the second one here is for this door handle. If you do have kids, to so keep little curious fingers out of the way when you're driving, go ahead and shut this. That way they don't get any thoughts of their own um, as far as playing with this. This does have a screen door as well to detach a screen door. When this main door is open, you just simply lift this latch up and the screen door will open for you. Excuse me, I said that wrong. You push the latch down. Now, coming over here, you do have these white hooks. These are all over the place, so you occasionally fall off. Don't worry about it. If they fall off, just throw them somewhere in a drawer and just tell me where they are when we get back. Now, this is the most important part of the RV. It is above the range, and it has little warning signs all over the place telling you how everything works. Once the main system is on, you can simply test the system by going here. And right here, you can see battery condition, LP gas, fresh water, whole tank one, and whole tank two. Whole tank one is black water. Whole tank two is gray water. What's the difference? Black water is everything that goes through the toilet. Gray water is everything else. That would be the shower, the sinks, and so on. Now coming over here, this is the water pump. To turn the water pump, you simply turn this on, and then the water pump is on. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because we don't have any water in the system, and that can burn up the pump. So make sure when you turn the water pump on, you have fresh water. Unlike now, as you can see, there is none. Coming over here, this is the hood light, which is pretty straightforward. You turn it on, the hood turns on. Let's just drop south here a little bit, and this right here is your range. You have a three burner range. This front burner here is the most powerful by a long shot, and then these are two smaller burners. So if you're boiling water, I would definitely start here, like for spaghetti, and move it back here once you have it boiling. Lift this up, turn the gas on, light it. Lighter is provided in one of these three drawers. Typically, you'll find it in the middle drawer in here, as you can see, it's right there. Now coming over here, the oven has a pilot light. Once that is lit, you're gonna to wanna to verify that actually worked and look in here, you're gonna see a fire in there. If there is no fire and you smell gas, you see, turn it off and try again, or get a lighter and just manually do it. This right here are two different pans that fit. Now this oven does, it's 15 inches by 14 inches. If you wanna bring your own pans, that's the measurements for you. This right here is just a cooking pan, and then this is a uh, cake tray, but a lot of people use it for omelets. They basically put eggs in each one with various ingredients, and voila, throw it in there for 15 minutes. You have a whole bunch of miniature omelets. <clears throat> now, coming to the microwave here, the microwave obviously is not on because the generator does not is not on. Neither is the air conditioner, which is located right here. To power the gen uh, power the air conditioner that's simply just right here this is to turn it on and then this here is to adjust the temperature for the ac now coming down over here this is how you turn the generator on which is directly below the sink you only have three switches down here so it's pretty straightforward 
The first switch on the far right hand side is the start stop. To turn the generator on, you just simply hold it down for three seconds. And once you do that, you'll feel the generator start up and it will turn on. Now, just a word of warning there, generator will not turn on unless there's at least a quarter tank of gas in the vehicle. If less than a quarter tank, it will not turn on. The reason for that is because you don't want to use up all your gas by accident and not be able to drive out of the RV. These are your two water heaters. Leave the gas on at all times, but make sure you do have water in your system. Otherwise, you're going to burn up my water heater and I will be very sad. And then right here, you have the electric water heater. Electric water heater only works. That's one of the four items. Only works if you are plugged into a power source or the generator is on. But do not turn the generator on just to use this. Just use the gas because the generator uses a lot more gas gas than the gas that's used here. Plus this is propane which is wildly cheaper than the petrol that we throw in for the generator. Now coming to the LP gas which I mentioned earlier. LP gas is going to be full. It's empty now but it will be full upon pickup and that should last you for at least two weeks with normal use but that is highly dependent on how much you use this. This right here is your heater which is a whole house heater. You have vents everywhere. Once you start looking for them, you'll see them all over the place to heat your house. With that said, this is incredibly hard to turn on, but you can by flipping it and then you can flip it back. Here is the thermostat, which you can adjust it for hot or cold. And then this here is the master bedroom. You do have a 10 by 10 gazebo tent, which you're welcome to use if you like, as well as plenty of storage throughout the RV, two closets, multiple drawers, so on and so forth. And you do have a plug underneath there. Underneath this bed, you can actually lift up the bed from down here and lift it up. And then there's storage under there as well as two Tommy Bahama chairs and an umbrella for your use if you choose to use one. Coming back over to the top vent here, the top vent, which needs to be shut during use, but you can go ahead and open it and then you can adjust the temperature if you like. And then you can turn on the whole house fan if you want to use. Obviously, like any whole house fan, it would look, work a lot better if there's something else open in the RV. Now this right here is your door, which will just latch into this little knob here. And so this separates you from the rest of the cabin from for a master bedroom. Now, shutting this is another option. And so instead of using this, you can shut this. And now you have both bathrooms available to you if it's just the two of you or just the one of you. Um, and then you have the master bedroom. You have both bathrooms available to you and you don't need to use this. Now, starting with the bathrooms. First off, this is a shower. Shower is pretty straightforward. You have two lights right here that you can use just by pressing on them. They do have multiple colors, pretty easy to use. And then right here is your shower apparatus. Hot on the left, cold on the right, just like any normal house in the United States or Canada. To turn it on, you just simply turn on the hot water and then turn on the cold water. The hot is incredibly hot, so be careful not to burn yourself. Once you have the desired temperature, you're gonna to wanna to take this handle down here and just turn it off. Get into the shower. Go ahead and shut this, remove the shower mat, obviously. In your shower, and then you can flip it back on. Use the water sparingly, left, off, on, off, on. Use as little water as possible for the primary reason of the fact that your hot water tank is incredibly small and you will run out of hot water before you're done showering if you just leave it on the entire time. So basically, get yourself wet, then turn it off, clean yourself, and then turn it back on, rinse off, and get out of the shower. That's the best way to do it. All these lights are LEDs, so they are highly efficient, way better than what you would typically find in most RVs. However, you can actually switch it, so they're even more efficient by just using one because they are incredibly bright. It's not necessary to have them all on. They're just on right now, more for theatrical than anything else. This is included in every single RV, in which basically is not for you to take, but it has tons of soaps in it. And the soaps are just various soaps that my wife and I have picked up during our travels in different hotels across the United States and the world that we just then throw in the RV for your guys' convenience and use. Toilet paper and other various obvious objects are going to be down there for your use, as well as a hair dryer down there, which can be plugged in right here. Three hand towels and, of course, various other towels for your use are there, as well as in here in the medicine cabinet. Bug spray <coughs> is also included. This right here, this needs to be removed, obviously, if you're going to be using the sink. This is only here just to keep the smell from the gray water tank from radiating back up. Even though there is a pee trap, sometimes when you're running around in the RV, especially driving, they can swish around, so it's just good to have that closed. All right, stepping out of the bathroom through the rest of the cabin here. I'm going to go to here. Below the sink, you have different cleaning apparatuses that you can use to clean the RV. 
If you spill wine, for example, there's resolve there to try to clean it up. Please don't use any bleaching or ammonia substances as they are corrosive. And I'd rather you just use something like an all-purpose cleaner. I think the all-purpose cleaner in there does have ammonia, but it's a very small amount, so it's not a big deal. Here are your utensils. There's typically about 12 of each, except there's only six knives. Right here are various utensils to use for cooking. And then down here are various apparatuses to use once you park the RV. This is basically when you connect the city water. You connect an inline water filter so you can drink out of the tap if you desire to do so. And then this here is a regulator. And this basically regulates the pressure of the city water. That way we don't blow all the lines in the RV. This is already tuned to be below 60 PSI. However, it is a dynamic tuning. So if the city water is crazy pressured, um, it may go a tick above 60 PSI, but typically you're gonna see it around 40 PSI. If it does tick above 60 PSI, this flathead screwdriver is provided in every RV rental and just twist this clockwise and it will tighten up the valve system there for you pretty quickly. There's also a first aid kit and two gloves down there for your convenience. Now there is storage underneath here and here and that couch that I'm sitting on to make this video. Down there, you're gonna see a carbon monoxide detector and an old school Looks like an RJ45 jack, I'm not sure. Anyway, an old school telephone jack or ethernet jack. Now coming back through the RV, if you look, I just wanted to point out one more thing in the master bedroom that I missed. And what that is, is basically the cold, uh, the heat, uh, the tank heaters, if it's too cold outside. This will actually turn on the tank heaters if it drops below around 28 degrees Fahrenheit or approximately negative three Celsius. You're gonna to wanna to turn this on, that way your poop doesn't freeze overnight because that's just awkward for everyone involved. Now, coming back over here, I'm just gonna run through all the cabinets and where what everything else is. This, of course, is a queen size bed. This is a twin bed, this is a twin bed, and then you have another queen in the back. You could theoretically, I've seen people do it, put five kids across the top of here because this is actually almost the size of a king bed and it's eight feet long. So five kids would still get about a foot and a half each of space if you put them parallel to each other. Anyway, enough said about that. You have a blanket for every single bed. You have two pillows per bed and then you have all the linens which are properly labeled top bed, which is this bed. And then of course you have sofa and table bed which is the table bed and the sofa we are just looking at. This table obviously collapses down, and then you have these which pop out and sit on top of there, giving one smooth surface. It's not the most comfortable bed in the world. I have slept there. Um, it's not horrible, but it's not my first pick. Coming to the front here and all the cabinets. The first one is all the electronics. You do have a battery charger for two batteries, which would charge up the batteries for the lantern that's in here. The lantern should last for about 30 hours, so you shouldn't have to charge it, but just in case, you also have a TV and DVD player here on its side right now, so it won't tip over while you drive that you can use. Again, that stuff plugs in, so if you're not connected to ground power at your campsite, don't bother using the TV because it'd be a little ridiculous and kind of noisy to just run your generator to watch a movie. Here is obvious stuff. The only thing I want to point out that might not be so obvious in this top shelf area is a dehumidifier. If you're staying on the coast and it is quite humid and you're connected to ground power, please use this and it will get rid of a lot of sweating on windows, which will just make it more pleasant for everyone in the RV, especially the people sleeping up here as that window right there will sweat on top of the person sleeping next to the window and they will wake up probably a little cold and grumpy. Now, coming over here, this is the obvious kitchen stuff. Some of the cups have been left from previous people. Others are ours. We inventory everything. Please don't remove anything that's obviously permanent, such as all this stuff. We typically don't use this stuff because paper plates are a lot easier to wash because you don't have to wash them. Opposed to this, you have to wash them. Now you're standing at the sink for 20 minutes every single morning doing dishes instead of taking a beautiful hike through the woods. Going ahead and shutting this and wrapping around to over here. You have a cabinet below and above. Those are completely empty except for one cutting board, which is up here below, which you might not see otherwise. You're free to use that if you like to clean and replace when you're done though. Coming here, you have four glass mugs, some tea, coffee filters, some sugar if necessary, ground, uh, no, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> Pete's coffee and then a grinder. Uh, in here, you have, of course, some apparatuses for um, barbecuing and then it random spices, Remy Cube, and a tea kettle. That is pretty much it, other than a few little nuances, which I'll cover while you're here, such as, of course, you have two seatbelts here and three seatbelts over there and two there, making a total of seven. 
And then you, of course, have all these extra LED lights, which you're welcome to use, but they're a backup, so please only use them if you absolutely have to. <coughs> and, of course, the old-school UHF VHF antenna, which no longer works, but there is an HD antenna located in this cabinet if you choose to use it. You do have some cabin features up front, but because of the darkness and the levels of the light, it'd be a little ridiculous to try to show them to you now, so that will be covered in the next film. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic trip. It should be a lot of fun. My wife and I love going into RVs and traveling around to like Yellowstone or Arches National Park or Lake Tahoe. Anyway, feel free to give me a call if you have any questions. Email or text as well is fine. Otherwise, have a great time, and we'll talk to you guys soon.